The Sentry SBC controller is a dedicated logic control system capable of controlling any automatic sampler in the Sentry product line. In today's video, we will be discussing how the SBC works with Isoloc specific samplers. Before we get started with the explanation on how to utilize and start up the SBC controller, there are a few potential hazards that we need to discuss. This equipment may contain fluids at very high pressures. Prior to installing, removing, or maintaining this equipment, ensure that it is isolated from all connecting piping and is depressurized. The contents have been drained and the equipment is cool. This equipment also may contain moving parts. All drive guards and doors must be secured in place when this machine is being operated. The equipment must maintain a maximum surface temperature dependent on its operating conditions. It has to stay below ignition temperature of dust or gas atmosphere where it is installed and failure to comply could result in an explosion causing serious injury or death to personnel and damage of equipment. This controller has an incoming power of 100 to 240 VAC. The distributed power throughout the inputs and outputs is 24 VDC. The only alarm output available for this model is the IC cabinet full alarm. The SBC controller allows for navigation to the user and setup screens with ease. To specifically do this, please see the user manual for more details. You can toggle through screens, such as the main screen, options, and others with the up, down, left, and right arrows. And each button has a corresponding numeral value when inputting settings. The SPC comes with varying set points. They are as follows. Sample time which determines the time the plunger dwells in the process stream. Delay time, the time allowed for the sampler to retract before the purge air is actuated. Purge time, which determines the duration of the purge air. You'll want to set this as short as possible to prevent sample degradation. Cycle time, which determines the time between samples. The batch sets the maximum number of samples per, per cycle. Delay start is the amount of time to elapse before sampling begins. The flow counter determines the number of pulses from a pulsing flow meter required to initiate a sample collection instance. And finally, IC jars, the total number of jars available for an optional indexing cabinet. There are three different modes available on this device. Auto mode, remote mode, and grab sample. Auto mode is the default mode of operation. By pressing the auto key, you're placing the controller in auto mode. All operating commands are initiated at the controller panel. The sampler will automatically become active and operate according to the set points you entered. You will need to press the off key to stop auto operation. Remote mode is when you initiate the sample remotely via an external dry contact closure. Press the remote key to place the controller in remote mode. Start and stop commands are initiated from a remote control system. Sampling is started and stopped based on an external contact. When the contact is closed, sampling starts. When the contact is removed, sampling stops. If contact is removed in the middle of a sampling cycle, the sampler completes the cycle, then stops. A momentary closure of the remote contact results in a single sample being taken. Finally, grab sample. By pressing the grab key to take a single sample, you will be taking a grab sample. This can be taken at any time the sampler is not actively sampling. The current state of the sampler will be displayed on the main screen. In auto mode, when the grab sample is complete, the cycle timer resumes counting from the point at which it was interrupted. If you take a grab sample during remote mode, 
The cycle timer resumes counting from the point at which it was interrupted or waits for the next momentary closure of remote contact input. Additional sampling controls include batch sampling, flow proportional sampling, such as 4 to 20 milliamp, flow counter, and delay start are available in the options menu. By pressing the option key on the controller, you'll view the menu. Use the small arrow keys to navigate to the desired option, then press enter. Once you have reached the desired option and made the changes, press the escape key to return to the options menu. The batch option allows for the sampler to take a specific number of samples, then stop. For example, this option could be used to fill a container and then stop sampling until the container can be replaced. To enable the batch option, press the arrow next to enable on the soft key. The standard set point will be one. If you'd like to change this set point, press the enter key to backlight the value. Use the up and down arrow keys to adjust the value incrementally or use the number keys. When the desired value is displayed, press enter. Once a batch is complete, sampling will stop. To reset the batch counter, simply press the off key, the 4 to 20 milliamp proportional sampling setting allows for a 4 to 20 milliamp signal from a flow meter to be input into the controller. Set points for the sampling time at maximum flow and minimum flow need to be entered. These set points are used to calculate the park timer value. Extend and retract times are still based on the operator entered set points. Based on the analog input from the flow meter, a sampling rate is determined. This value is a linear interpolation between the minimum and maximum flow set points enter. The option is enabled by pressing the arrow next to the enable soft key. The minimum and maximum flow set points are entered using enter, up and down arrow keys, and escape key as detailed in the set point section of this manual. A dash box appears around the active selection. The left and right arrow keys can be used to move between the fields. A value below 4MA will suspend the sampling. As soon as the input goes above 4MA, the timing will resume, picking up where it left off. The flow controller setting will allow a sample to be taken after an X number of pulses. The X is determined by the flow counter set point. Enter the options and highlight the set point. Enter the set point value by hitting enter, up and down arrows, and then escape key as detailed in the set point section. The square wave must have an on time of at least 200 microseconds for the controller to recognize the input. This option is no longer a time-based sampling cycle. The time to between samples is determined by the number of counts from the flow counter input. Extend and retract times are based on operator set points. When the delay start function is selected, sampling will wait until the contact is closed. After the time delay has expired, sampling will start. This feature is useful if you have a pump that cycles on and off. You only want to sample when the pump is on and at full flow. Connect the dry contact under the desired time delay, place the controller in auto, and sampling will take place only when the pump conditions are met. To establish the delay start option, <clears throat> use the enable soft key and set the set point values using enter, up, and down arrow keys and escape as detailed in the set point section. Now that we have gone through the basic operation of your SBC controller, let's review some basic setup and troubleshooting. When setting up your SBC, there are several data points that need to be determined in order to successfully obtain a representative sample. The total composite volume desired, the total time allowed to collect the composite, the number of sample collection incidents to be contained, the delivered volume for each sample collection, the duration of each sample collection incident, the delay time, and the purge time. Let's go through a basic example 
not including the delay time and purge time of a sample point. Let's say you are looking to collect 500 cc's of sample during a 10 hour shift. Your sampler collects five cc's every time it takes a sample. Given that you'll need to take 100 samples in your 10 hour shift, let's calculate how we would need to do that. By converting 10 hours to 36,000 seconds, we are able to easily divide 36,000 divided by 100, equaling 360 seconds. By converting back 360 seconds, your sample should be taken every six minutes. That six minutes is the interval at which your sample needs to be taken. To specify this six minutes for your extend time and retract times, subtract the extend time, in this case five seconds, to identify the retract time interval of five minutes and 55 seconds. It does not include delay time or purge time. Some basic issues you may run into include buttons will not respond, the controller was up and running, and the plant has probably observed a power outage or a voltage fluctuation. The controller will automatically go into idle mode when this occurs, and certain buttons will be disabled. Follow the steps to change the state of the controller from idle back to run. From the main screen, press the up and down keys together. This will take you to the system menu. Arrow down to view status and press enter. Once mode is highlighted, press enter again and change the status from idle to run. Exit the screen and press main and all buttons should work now. If you are counting issues with the speed at which your sample probe extends and retracts, you can increase or decrease the flow via the screw that regulates the air exhausting from the cylinder. Turn the screw clockwise to decrease the cylinder speed and turn the screw counterclockwise to increase the cylinder speed. When shipped from the factory, the advancing and retracting speeds are equal. If you have any further questions regarding how to utilize or troubleshoot your SBC controller, please contact one of our customer support specialists and we'll be happy to help.